Hey everybody, I'm Sarah Gallegos. Welcome to the behind the scenes version of Love of Quilting. I'm here on set with my good friend Carla Heron. Welcome. And it's great to be here sewing with you. Carla and I have a great time sewing together and she's always got more to share than we can get to in a segment. So we thought it would be fun to share with you some of her favorite ways to use a couple of feet for quilting and how to stitch in the ditch specifically. Well, let me get those feet out of my pocket. <laughs> We teased because she pulled one out of her pocket during the segment, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. Because who doesn't have their sewing feet in their pocket, right? So here we've got a couple of different feet, and we talked a little bit about the open toe foot on the segment, but what do we got here? This is a stitch in the ditch foot. Mm -hmm. It's got a little guide that's going to slide right down the center of that seam that we've sewn when we've sewn our patches together or put our binding on, whatever kind of sewing that we're going to do. And it's going to follow that guide and right. kind of hide our stitches in the ditch. Right. And stitching in the ditch is a question that we get quite a bit at Love of Quilting. People want to know how to stitch in the ditch. What does it mean? How is it easiest to do it? Now, when you're stitching in the ditch, you are generally using a straight stitch. So be careful with your stitch in the ditch foot because most of them have a single hole opening just for a straight stitch. So you wouldn't want to use a decorative stitch if you've got your stitch in the ditch right. foot on, right? You'll definitely break a needle. <laughs> That's a bad day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how does this work? We're going to snap on the foot. Okay. We're going to snap the foot on our machine. Get our thread out of the way and just snap it right on. And then I like to tuck the thread under the foot just to mm -hmm. keep it back out of my way. And I'm going to just lower my foot down into that ditch. Now, if I don't get it exactly where I want it, I'm going to just touch my foot up button and then get my position just right. I've yeah. got a straight stitch selected on the machine. Good. Double checked that. Right. And then I'm going to just let that, that guide of that foot follow right into my seam Perfect. so that my stitches would be hiding. Now, of course, I would be using a thread that would disappear into right. my stitching so you wouldn't necessarily see it. And I want to be careful when I come to another seam okay. if I'm working on patchwork because it's very easy to get a little wiggle wobble in it and um, n no longer be in your ditch. I always call that hitting the curb. Yes. <laughs> so, so the goal here is to stitch in the ditch, right. but sometimes you hit a curb and you get a wonky and, You know, if stitch. I need to stop and just kind of reposition my fabric, then that's what I'm going to do. Needle in the down position, and I'm just going to sew right along with that blade guiding right through pull my that thread out. It's oh, hot right got a thread on that's blocking our beautiful go. view yeah. of our stitches. Perfect. And just could continue to follow right along that seam line. And you've also got the walking foot on, so maybe share a little bit about that. Multiple layers of fabric tend to slide and you get down to the end and you're a little off. Right. Walking foot allows the fabric or helps the fabric stay together, stay in the, um, you know, at the same level so that when you get down to the end, you don't have that. And now, traditionally, I wouldn't have binding on here already right. too. So I'd have a little bit more free movement with my stitching, but I'm gonna get down to the end and I would do a tie off and then I would cut. And super and important when you are quilting that you do lock that stitch in, right. you're not gonna sew back over the seam again. So let's take a look. Oh my gosh, you did really well. Look at that. Well, thank you, but the machine makes it easy, the foot makes it easy. And which machine have you got here? I have the Performance Icon, right. new top of the line sewing machine for the FOF line. So no embroidery sewing. Now another option that we've got, and we kind of talked about this in the segment a little bit too, is to use an open toe foot because this, I just flicked it, allows us to utilize some different stitches too. You can play with some of your larger, more decorative stitches. And, and how did you refer to them earlier? <laughs> I call this uh, stitching in the neighborhood. So <laughs> stitching in the ditch, you want to be really super straight. I totally stole that from my friend Denise. Um, you want to be nice and straight, but if you aren't quite as confident with staying perfectly straight in that ditch, again, play with the foot because that'll help you a lot. But another fun way to kind of practice and get to know it is by using a stitch that's got a little bit of sideways movement. So it's not quite so obvious if you come out of that center needle position and again we my friend Denise and I always call that stitching in the neighborhood uh -huh. <laughs> and, and I would pick a decorative stitch that was maybe equally attractive on both sides yeah. if I wanted to straddle the ditch or use something as simple as my serpentine stitch yeah. which is just a, a 
exactly what it sounds like, a, right. a little snake. If you use a stitch that has a really obvious center line and you don't stay exactly in the ditch, then you've kind of defeated the purpose of using a decorative stitch, right? Right. It'll be very visible is what I mean. Right. So using something that's maybe not quite symmetrical and doesn't have that center line helps you with this yeah. technique. And, and in this, I'm just going to use the guide on my foot to follow the seam line instead mm -hmm. of having a blade that follows it. And I'm just going to let it sew on each side. Oh, it helps if you actually select the stitch once you, you go. once you talked about it. But here's that little snake stitch, the serpentine stitch, and it just goes back and forth, back and forth. It's pretty. On each side, and just secures your different layers together. Great. You know, when you started with a zigzag for a second there, and that looks kind of nice, too. That That's a fun stitch as well. We'll cut it and move it off. And You know, it's really whatever your imagination wants. Yeah. Don't you feel like that's the whole yes, that's, beauty of sewing? Yes, that's why we sew, to make yeah. it what we want, not what somebody else decided for us. Exactly. So experiment with all of those stitches built into your machine, the different accessory feet you have, and just let your imagination run wild. Exactly. Thanks for sharing a little extra you're, with us. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for watching.